Let's see. Evolutionists disclaiming the Big Bang Theory. Oh boy, I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this. <laughs> Yep, they always gotta have dramatic music when you're about to break the rules of physics. Oh, and in case you're wondering, no, evolutionists, or I should say scientists, don't believe that the Big Bang was a big explosion. Big Bang is a misnomer. We have always believed that it was an expansion of the universe. Are you fucking serious? We have had proof for years of the expansion of the universe, and if you don't believe it, that's your fucking problem. Here it is. In June of 2001, a satellite was launched into space called the Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe, or WMAP. Its mission was to get a baby shot of the universe. And on 2003, after two years of recording data, it sent back the information. And that information proved that the universe had at one point been very tiny. And how did it do this? Because we know that light and radio waves travel at a finite speed. If you're looking at something 13,000 light years away, then you're looking at how it was 13,000 years ago. Pretty wild, huh? Anyway, this is the picture that WMAP sent us. Proving the universe was small and proving universal expansion. The beauty of this is that to an uneducated person, this may look like nothing more than a bunch of colors and dots. But to someone who knows what it is, you're looking at the young universe. It's like looking at a picture of an 80-year-old man when he was two years old. This is a universe at about 5,300 years old, and these colors represent heat. This is the biggest piece of evidence we have for the Big Bang Theory, because this proves how small the universe actually was. Still don't believe me? Then meet this guy. His name is Edwin Hubble. He was a famous scientist way back when, and you know what? He came up with the pioneering concept of the redshift. Basically what this is, is a technique used to measure the distance of stars by using the Doppler shift, which everything has. Red goes to blue, and you can measure how far away something is by that in the same way that you can measure the distance of a car with a radar gun. This pioneering concept would help Hubble discover that the universe is and has been expanding for a very long time. And you know what? They was so revolutionary, they named a motherfucking space telescope after the guy. Okay, moron, listen up. Planetary evolution and solar evolution are two completely different things. Planetary evolution and solar evolution happens when gravity condenses things down. The Big Bang says nothing about planetary evolution. The Big Bang simply says how matter was created. It simply says how hydrogen and how helium got there. Everything else? is completely worthless, and it doesn't apply to the Big Bang Theory. It applies to the theory of solar evolution, to the theory of planetary evolution, which aren't as robust as the theory of evolution. <sighs> Even the Big Bang Theory doesn't have as much evidence as the theory of evolution, but you know what? That's completely unimportant, because it's still a theory, which means it's accepted by everyone in the, com in the scientific community, just like the theory of gravity is. Have you ever questioned the theory of gravity? Yeah, what goes up must come down, but the birds fly, so obviously gravity's wrong. Durr.
understand a thing, do you? Basically, what this gobshite is trying to tell us is that because the universe is expanding, that all matter should be blown away and, you know, everything else, blah, blah, blah. Things shouldn't be clustered together and, you know, planets wouldn't even be formed. Our moon would go spiraling off into nothing and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we've all been here before. Well... Sorry to say, you're a complete and fucking moron. Because what you're forgetting is that there's gravity. What you're forgetting is that there's the electromagnetic force. What you're forgetting is that there are black holes. What you're forgetting is that there are things that are holding these things together. Gravity clumps together planets. Gravity clumps together stars. And it puts those things in systems around each other. You know what I'm saying? Basically, yes, matter is getting farther and farther apart. But and places where it was close together at one point, and it was able to latch onto each other, it's become solid. That's why we have galaxies, but that's why other galaxies are so far away, like four billion light years to get to Andromeda or something. I don't know the numbers. Numbers don't interest me. Okay, they do. My point is this. Gravity and electromagnetic forces and the weak nuclear force, the strong nuclear force, bring everything together. And it makes the world a whole nice and peachy fucking clean place. You get that? Good. Oh, so because you completely ignore the existence of gravity and other binding forces in the universe, suddenly the universe is made by God? Yeah, that makes perfect logical sense. Ignorance is bliss. Dun da 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 dun. Well, there you have it. There goes the entire butt jacker cunt faced argument. And you know, it was rather simple and easy for me to debunk. And you know what? I'll be happy to do it again. I just like people who try to disprove my science without having any science of their own. They think just because they do an experiment with peas that somehow the Big Bang Theory doesn't work. Yeah, try making those peas 50,000 times bigger and throwing them out into the vastness of space. Then we'll see what the fuck happens. All right. Peace, love, and the inevitable flowers. Mwah.